became a costume designer was in 2003, I was going to college and my makeup professor asked if we wanted to get extra credit. And I said, sure, what does that entail? And he said that we had to go to a makeup school in Burbank called Makeup Designery. So my aunt was living here, so I decided to take the weekend and go up there. Fell in love with the school. Next semester, I decided to switch majors and got into makeup first, then hair, and started styling a little bit on the side. When I was working in makeup, I was working for Sharon Golt, who was David LaChapelle's makeup artist, and I started working um, under her guidance in makeup on David LaChapelle's music videos. So I was doing makeup for about two to three years, and then I got um, a call to do a short film with a producer named Mark Ferrero, and he started hiring me for costumes instead of makeup because he couldn't usually find somebody in the costume department. So my first big break was working on Time Rider, which was a German amusement park ride with John Cleese starring in it as a nutty professor. So it was pretty neat. In 2009, I got my first big break. It was called Common Rider Dragon Night, and it was for the CW, and it flipped right in the middle of my show, so I was able to join the Costume Designers Guild. My process as a costume designer, I usually get the script, and I look at it, I read it a couple times, I break it down based on if, there, if it's period, if it's sci-fi, if it's fantasy, contemporary, and then I go and I start doing my research depending on what the project calls for, some sketches, inspiration boards, mood boards. If the creator or writer has like a great character breakdown, I sometimes look at that for inspiration. And then I start having meetings with the writer or the director to see what they're uh, envisioning for the script. So as a costume designer, I was still working on a lot of great projects, but then decided to become decided to go into assistant costume designing so I could apprentice under other designers to hone in on my craft. My first assistant gig was with CDG president Salvador Perez on Pitch Perfect 2, which was a really great project because I got to go on location. So that was a really great uh, learning process for me on going from sketch all the way down to uh, actual practical costumes. So after I worked with Sal, um, I had the pleasure of working with Lynn Paolo on How to Get Away with Murder, and that was pretty interesting. That story arc started from one point in the first episode, carried all the way through. So it was a really great learning experience on how to do continuity and a lot of blood work and stunts. Working with Joseph Poor on the Orville was an amazing experience. That was the first time I had ever seen an, a show in its entirety be made to order. We were doing like 20 to 30 aliens per episode, which was every nine days. It, it was incredible. And the way that Joseph works with his patterns and his sketches and the textures that he merges together is, is something that I feel very blessed to have been around for, for the first uh, six episodes of season two. I've also been very lucky to work on period. I got to do 1989 to 1996 with Hope Hannafin on Law and Order, True Crimes, Menendez Murders. And that was incredible because we were actually recreating history from pictures and the uh, jury trial that happened during that horrific time uh, in Beverly Hills. After working with Hope um, on Law and Order, she asked me to work for a great show on Netflix called Chambers, which was shot in Albuquerque, New Mexico with Uma Thurman and Tony Goldwyn. It was a really great experience. The creator, this was her first time show, so it was really great to see the process of watching Leah Rachel put everything down on paper and then her getting the excitement of watching us do fittings with her characters and watching them go through the 10 episode arc of what happens to them at the end. In 2013, um, our former president, Mary Rose, asked me to join the Young Workers Committee um, on a national level. And she sent me down to Philadelphia where I fell absolutely in love with the IA and their ideals of unionism. And after that, I decided to run for the CDG board as secretary. This is my second term here, and I couldn't be more proud of our membership and of our union. In addition to that, uh, President Salvador Perez asked me to be the education director, which I hold very strongly and make sure that I take every moment to find the perfect classes for our members, to uh, educate them with new media, with illustrations, with Photoshop, just whatever I can get my hands on, I try to make those classes the best for our membership and make sure that they're learning as much as they possibly can to make their craft stronger. It's really funny because I really did think I was going to be in makeup and hair. I, I loved doing it. And when I was able to create John Cleese's character for Time Writer as this crazy nutty professor, it was like this amazing transformation. He became that character. And I think I knew then that I had fallen in love with fabrics and textiles. I think that being a costume designer is the most amazing, magical job 
that I call a career. I can't, I can't imagine doing anything else. I think about it all the time. I look at people and I like memorize their outfits in case I ever need that for a character choice. I just, I think costume design is just the most amazing thing ever. And I, I love doing it and I hope I get to do it for a very long time. I'm Ivy Thade, proud member of the Costume Designers Guild.